With all the obvious mistakes about the hijackers' identities, the phony bin Laden tapes, the physics of the building, the lies about the anthrax, the lies about weapons of mass destruction, the way the whole narrative was woven together with 9-11, you'd think somebody should be explaining this. There ought to be an investigation into this. Well, there was a investigation into it, sort of. There was supposed to be from the 9-11 Commission. It wasn't something the Bush administration wanted. Bush was adamant about blocking the formation of a commission to investigate 9-11. Why would the President of the United States not want 9-11 to be investigated? He battled with Tom Daschle, majority leader of the Senate and an anthrax target, about who would conduct an investigation. It wasn't until more than a year later that he conditionally permitted it. The conditions were that the Bush administration selected the commission heads who then selected and controlled the commission. It's a little bit like hiring Dracula to guard the blood bank. It would be like hiring Madoff to investigate fraud. You might as well have a former head of the CIA investigate the Kennedy assassination or have Boris Yeltsin investigate Boris Berezovsky. Wait, those last two actually did happen. Bush's first pick to chair the 9-11 Commission was Henry Kissinger upon the advice of Karl Rove. Henry Kissinger, a crook with a rap sheet so long and involved in disastrous covert operations and lies that no one could take him seriously. He resigned not because of that, but because he didn't want to disclose his clients. Because of the obvious conflicts of interest and the utterly negative credibility, Kissinger finally removed himself from the position. That didn't stop his less well-known business partner from making the cut, James R. Thompson. An interesting phenomena occurred on 9-11 where individuals using the Israeli-based instant messenger service Odega were warned about 9-11 before the attack. At least two individuals came forward about the warnings they had received. Certainly bin Laden wasn't warning these American Jews to avoid the towers. Someone else had prior knowledge. Hollinger Inc. and Hollinger Digital owns Onset Tech which cooperates with the messenger software of Odega as well as Converse. When you pull up the board of directors for Hollinger, you'll find some nefarious characters. Henry Kissinger, Richard Pearl, and James R. Thompson from the 9-11 Commission. With Thompson on the 9-11 Commission, you can be damn sure they didn't look into Odego. It was Hollinger-owned papers also that spread the bogus rumor about 4,000 Jews not showing up to work on the day of 9-11. This served to obfuscate the very real forewarnings from Odego by masking it as pointless anti-Jewish rhetoric. Hollinger would later be used by Pearl to bolster his Iraq war investments and then it had a large scandal with Conrad Black of which Thompson was also a part of. He ended up not doing much on the commission at all for a year. But not to be outdone by that audacious selection for the commissioners, the Bush administration topped itself in see-through corruption by choosing Iran-Contra's Tower Commission chairman who worked with Dick Cheney to co-chair the 9-11 Commission as well. I guess if you do well with one whitewash, then why not another one? Hamilton was also sitting on advisory boards for the CIA. But don't worry, they could still go lower. Much, much lower. Even worse than Hamilton becoming the co-chairman was placing a Zionist warmonger, Philip Zelikow, who was plucked right out of Bush's own National Security Council to be the executive director for the commission. Zelikow would have total control over hiring the 9-11 commissioner's staff and set up a tight filtering system over information sharing that went right through himself or Hamilton. One of his first actions was to hire Michael Hurley, a current officer in the CIA, to investigate the CIA. He also echoed the neocons propaganda about Iraq and 9-11. How pathetic for the 9-11 Commission's executive director to parrot the baseless Iraq did 9-11 deceptions. It wasn't new for Zelikow, it was an opportunity to promote his world view. In their book on the Israeli lobby, Mershimo and Walt exposed Zelikow for calling for war with Iraq to protect Israeli interest in speeches that he gave to universities. Zelikow would later admit as much with a so what attitude. Apparently, he forgot the 9-11 Commission was to investigate an attack on America 
and not to be a tool for Israeli interest. No one was really looking into 9-11. They were looking into how to use it. There was one dissenter in Zelikow's way, a staff member that slipped through the cracks, Donna Lesman. Breaking Zelikow's filter protocol, Lesman dug into the direct 9-11 connections with the government of Saudi Arabia. Zelikow fired her and had her findings deleted from the 9-11 Commission's report, 28 pages redacted. Perhaps she asked how a Saudi GID agent working with the FBI, was providing housing and actually living with 9-11 hijackers. National security whistleblowers tried to testify before the commission, but were either not asked to testify or their testimony was only barely acknowledged or worse yet, completely omitted from the record. Delacau was later revealed to be the real author of the Bush Doctrine, the justification of preemptive war, which has led to the deaths of more than a million people so far. Zelikow was the author of a very important document issued by the White House in September 2002 that really turned military doctrine on its head and said that the United States could become involved in preemptive war, preemptive defense, that we could attack a nation that didn't pose an immediate military threat to this country. And obviously in September 2002, it sure appeared that that document was being written with one target in mind, Iraq. Now, as I say, the, the author of the document at the time was anonymous. We didn't know that Philip Zelikow had written this thing. Uh, and that becomes known, I think, widely on the staff only in the final months of the 9-11 Commission investigation. And it appeared to pose yet another conflict of interest for Zelikow. Thomas Keene, the other co-chairman of the Commission, was there about as often as Obama went to the Senate. He was too busy engaged in his own personal profiteering racket. He said he could only commit one day a week to the Commission and would only appear in the press if it was with Hamilton. Apparently, investigating 9-11 was not important enough for him to postpone his other affairs, and this allowed Hamilton and Zelikow even more control over the operation. Like James Thompson, Tom Keene was too involved with his own scandals. What excellent choices for investigators. It's not like 3,000 people were killed. Keene later promoted and was greatly impressed with the comic book version of the 9-11 report which reduced it down to about 161 picture pages. And he's currently still going around the country hacking this junk into school systems to get elementary school kids even to learn about 9-11. When you hear about the idea of the 9-11 Commission report as essentially a comic book, your first reaction is, what are you, crazy? It's accurate. I mean, the graphic version is accurate. That's what happened. How could they compromise the integrity of the investigation further? What could make it even less objective? Fred Fielding. A current lawyer for Z, better known as Blackwater, a private mercenary firm currently on trial for murder and rape. This bastard actually countersued the families of the contractor's victims hung from a bridge in Fallujah to block them from gaining access into the circumstances surrounding the event. The details of what really happened are uncovered in Jeremy Scahill's book, Blackwater, Rise of the Mercenary State. Felding wasn't the only important investigator working with Blackwater. The Inspector General, who was supposed to let the other shoe drop on Hollinger and Richard Pearl, also found employment at Blackwater as a senior executive. You see the DVD extra to unravel that mess. Felding was from George Bush's White House Counsel. But don't worry. He was compromised further than that. He was a lawyer for a very high-level man in the Bush administration. You may have heard of him. His name is George Bush. It's bad enough that Bush refused to be interviewed by the commission without Cheney, but he also had his lawyer there, and on the side of the investigators. Why are you and the Vice President insisting on appearing together before the 9-11 Commission? Because the 9-11 Commission, Commission wants to ask us questions. That's why we're meeting, and I look forward to meeting with them and answering their questions. Uh, why you're appearing together rather than separately, which was their request? Because it's a good chance for both of us to answer questions that the 9-11 Commission is uh, looking forward to asking us, and I'm looking forward to answering them. Let's see. Don't you think that the families deserve to have a transcript or to be able to see what you Adam, said? Adam, you asked me that question yesterday. For an I got the today. same answer, yeah. You're one of those four that gets to see these documents. Would that change your opinion? No. They don't want 
any more eyeballs to see their documents than they can possibly get away with. It's a scam. It's absolutely disgusting. The president has said only a minority of the commission can see a minority of the documents, and then they have to clear what they're going to say to the rest of the commission with the White House. These blatant conflicts of interest should have been all over the news like a Tiger Woods sex scandal, but they were too busy promoting other things. The 9-11 Commission was a cover-up. It was a total joke, a farce. Heck, why not allow PNAC members to do the investigation? <laughs> they did. John Lehman, former Secretary of the Navy in 1987, while Jonathan Pollard was spying for Israel through naval intel, was also chosen to join the 9-11 con men, and he was a PNAC signature. PNAC, the Project for a New American Century, was a neoconservative think tank from the American Enterprise Institute. Its members comprised Department of Defense officials and media. They pulled together older Israeli-centric plans from Odin Yenin and IASVA's Clean Break Papers to create their magnum opus, Rebuilding America's Defenses. There's been a lot of focus on lines from that particular document, but this narrow scope has overshadowed their other important works, particularly on Afghanistan and Iraq. I can't go over all of them I have in previous films, but here's an overview. This is what the lie factory cranked out. Of course, these are also the men who lied about Prague, Atta, and Anthrax. The 9-11 Commission was an extension of the PNAC narrative of deception. Their report ignored the existence of core columns in the Twin Towers. The information on Saudi Arabia was redacted, and the info on Israel didn't even make it that far. Perhaps the most shocking and awful was their investigation into the World Trade Center No. 7. They didn't even do one. They spent $12 million to tell you nothing. Real American patriots have investigated it on their own for free. And trust me, it's an uphill battle against disinfo and ridicule. It doesn't matter how many people say what. It's based on evidence. That's all we need. There were reports of truck bombs and secondary explosions. And when looking back at the whole picture, the anthrax, the blame it on Iraq, the Patriot Act, and everything else that fits in, it becomes clear that they're lying about the towers as well. And a lot of people knew it was going to happen too. There were massive profits made. The crisis allowed for trillions of dollars to become unaccounted for. And the data that was housed that could track the massive corporate fraud was physically destroyed by the section of the Pentagon that was hit, as well as Building 7 in New York. For the Pentagon, when its own auditors admit the military cannot account for 25% of what it already spends. According to some estimates, we cannot track $2.3 trillion in transactions. $2.3 trillion, with a T. That's $8,000 for every man, woman, and child in America. Yet, how do you prosecute the government? Obviously, they don't investigate themselves. Thus, the Inspector General of the Defense Department is just part of the military-industrial complex, and the 9-11 Commission was itself composed of PNAC members, war profiteers, and criminals of prior cover-ups. In the councils of government, we must car guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We can't rely on these investigations. Where is our media? It would be easy for the mass media to explain this in a day. But again, these companies are just an extension of the corporatocracy at large. And yet we've had waves and waves, thousands, perhaps millions of citizens in America who have been reporting about the lies surrounding the war in Iraq, as well as 9-11, independently, on their own, often for free. There are thousands of blogs and websites, and it seems like the only way around this is the web. But that is rapidly changing, too. The ADL has already gone on a purging spree on YouTube. My account was completely deleted. Not just my videos. My entire account and all my videos were removed. No explanation was given. War by Deception 2008 wasn't up for even an hour. It is very important to realize that none of this would be possible 
if schools and the media, especially the media, would just explain what is happening rather than lying to you. Mass media out.